Welcome back guys. Ooh, I hear some chimes off in the distance over here, so we're gonna check that out. And we're gonna go down and see if we can steal the uh, the gas, the air tank. It might be just those guys because they have cowbells on. So never mind. I've never heard that before until this moment. No god. Let's go, shall we? Hopefully we can burn that tree down today too. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, how you like me now? You jerk. Oh, thanks for the pills, bro. Alright, we made it back. Okay, uh, let's see what's here. Oh, the leaves move, that's crazy. It's overgrown. Oh. Whoops. Hmm. I'm sitting on the floor right now. That's my bed behind me. Because my room's not big enough for a chair. So, let's make do, shall we? Oh, I hate those eye things. Ah! Oh, fluff. And these are a lot of bear traps. They're either trying to keep something out, or keep something in. So creepy that creeped me out. <laughs> Alright, destroy generator. I could repair it. Needs ten. Oh what? There was another way in. You've gotta be shitting me. An intense smell of flowers fills the air. All of these flowers. Is this something? No? Alright, here we go. Alright, I need a key. Someone is behind the door. Can you hear it? you what are you looking for here you're not from that goddamn village are you prove you're a good man fix our generator and I'll open the door oh okay I got the, the supplies for that Boop. locked I need a key thank you for fixing our generator you can come on in. Elephants. The air is filled with a suffocating sweet odor of rot. Who are you? The woman is wearing a heavy ruined coat. Her voice is superb and suppressed by the cracked gas mask she's wearing. Can't you speak? Did someone take away your voice? Two children hide behind the woman. The younger one hides nervously, cowering in fear. The older one just stands there, motionless. I feel like I've, I've changed since my time here has grown. You're not from around here. I would have recognized you. We may have... We may keep to ourselves, but I know everyone here. I would never forget your mug. The younger child pierces me with his eyes. The steam visor of his gas mask betrays his rapid breath. Your gob looks like, like that because of the fiendish air. Do you know? 
I bet you can't speak because you don't keep your mouth shut when walking through the woods. The trees and the plains are simply beautiful here. And the bushes, the blue, yeah, the bushes bloom j- Ah, oh, Jesus, sorry. The bushes bloom gorgeously this time of year, but don't let the charm of this land deceive you. The devil lurks between these trees, and he gets to you through your mouth and nose. The older child grabs onto his mother's hand, tightens, and does not lift his gaze from one of his huts, from one of the hut's walls. And you, you're just going to stand there? I know you want something, you leopard demon. You're not getting anything from us. I don't trust you, leopard gob. Do you hear me? I don't trust anyone who breathes this filthy air. The woman stares at me intensely through the cracked mask. Did you take my... Marcinek? Was it you who kidnapped him? Talk! No, th that cannot be. The woman stares at the floor. Her greasy black hair drops down her mask. It's impossible. Stupid child. He went out and never came back. He was about... Was on about how his granny will take him mushrooming. I have no idea where he... I told him he couldn't go outside. I told him that the devil will find him, take off his mask, and take him away. I would look for him, but... She lowers her head even more, as if observing the dead fly stuck to her coat. You want my trust? Bring my Marcinek back. My stupid Marcinek. Find him, and bring him home. Here's the key to his room. He was spending a lot of time there recently. Maybe you'll be able to find something there that will lead you to him. Photo of the road. Do you have anything to say about this? I remember this road. The woods devoured it about three years ago. It used to lead to our village. I walked it to school. The woman stares into the phone and they hypnotize. The road home. I wrote home. Any gossip? Something exploded, exploded in the western part of the swamp. It made the ground tremble. The devil knows what it was. I see you're curious. Investigate it. If you have a death wish, I think it happened in the junkyard. Yeah, and that was PR trick. The youngest child hidden, sit hidden behind the woman's back until now finally finds its courage to make a small step towards me. One little bear ate a little soup. A faint voice can be heard. Then another one came and... Quiet! The woman smacks the boy in the back of his head. The punch is so hard the hood of the rubber cloak lands on it, on his mask's visor. Not now, not in front of a stranger. You're just like these lunatics who roam around the woods searching for God knows what. There used to be more of them. I guess most of them starved to death. I remember when they appeared not far from here. It must have been around two years ago, around two dozens of them. They were led by these three weirdos dressed in old rags. They set up a camp at the marsh. There, between the trees, they watched our house, stared right into my windows and oddities. I thought they wanted to have kidnapped my children or harm them some other way. But when the night fell, I lost sight of them. There was no one there in the morning. Apart from those two here in Marsenek, there's one more boy of mine. My precious darling, a blessed child, who rests her hands on the oxygen tank of the children standing beside her. His love fall fills our tanks with clean air. For this, we're forever grateful to him. For the clean air, for the oxygen tanks, for those beautiful masks in the book in which the devil has revealed his true image. Along with this evil plan, my son took it away from the trees with his own hands and brought it here to us. Huh. The youngest child hidden behind the woman's back until now finally finds the courage to make a small step towards me. Okay, we read this. All right. Let's go check out her son's room. Drawings. Mushrooms. It's 
to the house in the mushroom glade. Old doormat. I think someone uses it as a bed. Ah, oh, poor kid. So, mushroom glade's up here, so we're gonna have to run all the way up north now. We've arrived. Oh, it's a little bright here. Arsenic. Shit. I'm gonna die here, man. Arsenic. I'm a friend. Your mother sent me. Inside the cottage is covered with mushrooms. The floor, even though it looks like it's made of wood, bends under my feet. A white, colorless goo seeps from the ceiling and the walls. Oh, I thought that may have been the old lady that they were talking about. Oh, pliers, we can upgrade our workbench. Key on the keyring, a colorless key. It feels so soft to touch. There's a drawing of three flowers etched on the keyring. But that was just an inner monologue for me. Uh, before I talk to you, I'm just gonna, never mind. <laughs> Mushroom granny. Oh, shit. An old woman sits on a weathered rocking chair. Her sleep is deep and peaceful. A handful of ripe mushrooms grow out from beneath her thick hair. Try to pick a mushroom from the woman's head. Wake the old lady. I don't need the mushrooms, so wake the old lady. The old la lady slowly opens her eyes for a moment. She stares into space with an absent gaze. Finally, she becomes aware of my presence. Wait, you're not? Her empty eyes now take a questioning expression. I didn't inspect any guests. She throws a nervous look at the door on her right. She gazes around the mushroom-infested house. She relaxes a bit. I suppose you won't tell me what you want. And you want something since you're standing here in front of me, right? Eat the old lady? Jesus Christ. Point your finger at the door. It's a door to my chamber. There's nothing that would interest you there. The old lady puffs her cigarette. Come back when you're ready. When you remember what it is you want from me. Show item. Photo of the road. The old lady examines the photo. Her thoughts wander far away. I remember cars driving along this road, and then they closed it. They set up a fence and a gate, but both the fence and the gate got devoured by the woods eventually. I think that's how it was. Child's drawing. The old lady takes the drawing, squinting her eyes. A wide, toothless smile appears on her face. That's why you came. The woman looks at the leaky sling of the mushroom-infested house, then squints her eyes. I thought you liked this wolf. The end of her cigarette lights up and puff blue smoke comes out of her nose. From that children's tale, the one who wanted to eat the granny. She opens her eyes and glances at the locked chamber room. A few days ago, a child appeared here, a boy. He thinks I'm his granny. The old lady stops for a second, trying to remember something. Grandma. He was very, he was very nervous. He kept repeating a rhyme over and over again. He hid in the corner and sat there for what must have been a whole day. I think he relaxed in the end. He seems to like it here. He draws. I think he likes to draw, but his drawings are not very childlike. The old lady smiles again. I really like having him around. His parents are still alive, right? 
Are you his father? Brother? He's in the other room. Here's the key. I will let him go if you wish to go with you. Oh, okay. Marcinek, your mother sent me. The boy is standing under a wall overgrown with enormous mushrooms. He's visibly scared. His lush mop of hair veils a restless, wide-open pair of eyes. The kid is whispering as if reciting something underneath his breath. The boy cowers and presses his back against the soft wall, which starts to ooze a white dew. Kneel and extend your arm towards the boy. The boy is terrified. Slowly, he slumps down from the wall to the ground, curling into a ball. The murmur turns into a loud recitation. One little bear ate a bowl of soup. Then another bear came in there were two. Four little bears made a sudden pow. Along came the fifth and took a little bow. Put the boy on your back and lead him to his family. When I take the boy into my arms, he starts screaming, reciting a rhyme over and over. One little bear ate a bowl of soup. Then another bear came in there were two. Four little bears made a sudden pow. Along came a fifth and took a little bow. This is going to be a long journey. Ah, jeez. Oh, good. We don't have to walk all the way back. <laughs> you brought back my child. The woman leans toward the boy. Marson. What? Where have you been? The boy stares at the ground in silence. Come here! Marsenek walks towards the woman, nervously plucking at his old, torn sweater. Look at you. Where's your mask? And the gas tank from your gracious brother. His love protects us. It fills our lungs with air. And this is how you thank him, young man? Your childish behavior made him very, very angry. And now we will have to apologize to him for your stupidity. The two kids standing behind their mother flinch. The woman grabs the boy's hand and disappears in the hallway. After a while, she comes back with an oxygen tank. Take it. It's a tank for you. It will protect you from the devilish air, the devilish breath, and the other's e evils lurking in this foul place. It's the only thing I love and the only thing I can give you. The tank is a little rusty, but it seems intact. On the side, I can see some unintelligible, unintelli unintelligible scribblings. The valve opens with a little resistance, but I don't hear this hiss of air. It's empty. Do not open the valve without need. You only waste the clean air. She pushes my hand away from the valve and closes it hastily. May it serve you well. Huh. Strange. Is Marcinek in here? One little bear ate a bowl of soup. Another bear came, and then there were two. Four little bears made a sudden bow. Along came a fifth and took a little bow. What? The lights went off. Nothing new. Uh, I think the generator just ran out, that's all. Dang, man. Alright, let's get back. I guess we're gonna hit the village tomorrow, because there's not much time left. Oh, sick. where their brother sleeps, but I don't know the code. It's getting really foggy. Why is it getting so foggy? What the hell? You got a stick, bro? 
Let's see if we can fill up this uh, air tank. Cool. Okay, I say we chill here for now. Hope for the best. So, it was such an interesting, weird thing. Like, those kids are obviously messed up because of the horrors that they've seen. But I didn't get the whole brother situation and the air. It's weird. I don't know. All I know is next episode we're going to go over to uh, the village and we're going to go kill this tree with some fire with my last mole of And I'm such a, you know, badass now that I've murdered everything in this game. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not even afraid of the night anymore. Hello? Oh, please don't come in here. Can we just like have one calm night? Please. Like I'm running low on supplies. is chasing me. Tell me that's it. Did it. 
Fuck, that actually got me really tense. I haven't had that in a while. What's this? Careful step. Oh. Oh. Okay, guys. Um, that does it for this episode. <sighs> like, subscribe. Much love. Take care. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And uh, have a good day, y'all.